This is question number six. We're told Harry wants to rent out boats at his local park. He can use linear programming to determine the number of each type of boat he should buy. Let X be the number of two-seater boats and Y be the number of four-seater boats. One of the constraints is X plus Y must be equal to or greater than 90. In part A for one mark, it says explain what this constraint means in the context of the question. So this is the number of two-seater boats, this is the number of four-seater boats, and it must be equal to or greater than 90. So all I'm going to write now for part A, we can say the total, so writing down, total number of boats must be at least 90. Total number of boats must be at least 90 or he needs 90 or more boats at least 90. Lots of different ways of wording this anything along these lines is perfectly fine for one mark. We're now told another constraint is that 2x must be equal to or less than 3y. In part b for two marks we're asked to explain what this constraint means in the context of the question. Again lots of different ways that you could answer this. We could say now that there can be a maximum of 1.5 two-seater boats for every four-seater boat. Or, if you like, you could say the number of four-seater boats must be greater or equal to two-thirds of the number of two-seater boats. So lots of different ways about thinking of it. You might want to rewrite this now to help you out and say now that 2x over 3 must be equal to or less than y and that might help you out. At most the number of two-seater boats can be one and a half times the number of four-seater boats. So anything along those lines is perfectly fine. We're now told a third constraint is that y must be less than or equal to x plus 30. In part c we're asked to represent these three constraints on diagram one in the answer book Hence, determine, and it says hence determine and label the feasible region R. So we've got four marks. So we've got these three constraints. We we'll also have non-negativity, which should be factored in here, and we can go ahead and do them. So let's start with this. X plus Y must be equal to or greater than 90. So if we think about this now, I could set, and I'll write it just here, X plus Y, so X plus Y must be equal to or greater than 90. What I'm going to do is simply consider if x was equal to naught and if y was equal to naught. If x is going to be equal to naught, what we're going to have now is y must be 90. And then if y is equal to naught, x must be 90. So I can draw this like so, and I'm just going to label this up. So that's that line there. Simply now considering x and y to be naught, that's what we get. So let's go ahead and just label this up. And it's important that we do label this line. So what we've got then is x plus y, this is the line x plus y is equal to 90. Now we need to shade out the region we don't want. We want this to be greater than 90. If you're ever unsure, test the origin. So is naught naught? so if x is naught and y is not, is that bigger than 90? Quite clearly it isn't. So what I'm going to do now is shade below the line. So if you want to think about it now as above or below the line, however you want to do it, I'm going to eliminate this now from the feasible region. And we shade that out. So my shading isn't going to be brilliant on here, but hopefully it will give you some idea. So all of this now is going to be gone, and we'll just get shot of that. So this now is not going to be in the feasible region. Um, hopefully your shading shouldn't take as long as we've seen with all of these D1 questions. For once, doing it on a computer, doing something on a computer actually takes more time. So that can be now eliminated. I've labelled up the line and this now represents the constraint that the total number of boats must be at least 90. I'm using a solid line because it's an inclusive inequality and we've done that part. So there we go. OK, that looks nice and neat. And I label that line. OK, let's now look at the next one. We've got this one here. We've got now 2x must be now equal to or uh, equal to or less than 3y. I'm just going to write it like this. y is going to be greater or equal to 2 thirds of x. So I'm going to draw that line. So if I drew the line y is equal to 2 thirds x, then let's pick some points. y is equal to 2 thirds x. 
I'm going to have now the line and we're going to have 30, 20. We're going to have 60, 40. So let's run that through. So 30, 20, 60, 40. And that will look something like that. Okay, so let's just check. I've got that bang on. That looks pretty good. And then I'm just going to label this line up. And I'm going to label this line now. And let's just put it here. I'm going to write this now as 2x is equal to 3y. So 2x is equal to 3y. Now we're interested in essentially when 2x is going to be equal to or less than 3y. Now if we pick a point, again, pick a point that you want. You can either go one side of the line. If we pick this point just here, we've got 0, 20. We can see that that part is going to be included, so we now shade below the line. So however you want to do this, that's what we're going to have. We can now eliminate this region from our feasible region. The feasible region just gives us a range of possible solutions that would satisfy all of the constraints that we have imposed as a result of our linear programming. So, you know, all of these, it's saying I can't have anything down here because it won't satisfy the first two of the constraints. Again, I'm using a solid line because it's not a strict inequality. It's inclusive. So we can have those on the line. OK, so that's done. That's sorted. That is very nice and straightforward. And we're just plugging in all of this. So this is now gone. We can't use any values from there. So that's up and done. OK, let's now look at the next one. Uh, y is going to be less than or equal to x plus 30. So we can draw the line y is equal to x plus 30. Let's go ahead and do that. So there's 30. And then we're going to be going up one for every one we go across. And that will look something like that. So let's just go ahead. And we can see now at this, let's just extend that a little more. Okay, so let's just keep going with that. That looks about right, and we'll just take it there. So I'm just going to label this up. This now is the line. So let's have a look at this. This is going to be, uh, what have we got? Uh, y is equal to x plus 30. So y is equal to x plus 30. So we want y less than or equal to, or equal to or less than x plus 30. Now if we just consider what we've got, we've got above the line or below the line, simply test a point if you can't see it. We're going to want this one below the line, so we're just going to shade above the line. Um, so let's go ahead and shade that out. Um, now we're starting to, and that looks pretty good. We're starting to find now our feasible region, and that should do it. If it asks you for a fourth constraint um, that isn't listed, just consider non-negativity. So in this particular case, we don't need to state it, um, as we can see from the inequalities, but it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's essentially already defined. But if they ask you, for example, if we're making tables and chairs, one of the constraints might be that x and y must be at least zero because we can't have minus 10 chairs. So non-negativity. OK, what we're looking at then is now to label this up. And this is the feasible region R. So what I'm going to do is just write this. R is a feasible region. So if we pick this point right here, that's 70 and 70. So we could have 72 seater boats and 70, uh, four seater boats. Remember, y is the number four seater boats, x is the number two seater boats. So if I just pick some nice points, we could see we could have 60 of the two seater, 50 of the, the four seater, that point right there. OK, so that's done. Uh, that's our four marks. So let's have a look. OK, each two seater boat, uh, boat costs £100 and each four seater boat costs £300 to buy. Harry wishes to minimise the total cost of buying the boats. In part D for one mark, we need to write down the objective function C in terms of X and Y. So what we want to do is minimise the cost. So what we can say then is the cost, let's just write this down, the cost to be minimised is going to be now 100, we've got 100X, so if we have any uh, two seat boats we buy, it's going to cost 100 quid, plus then we're going to have 300 y and this is to be minimized so to be minimized we want to minimize cost we want to maximize profit we want to maximize area so just think about the things we want to minimize way so minimize let's write this here minimize so that now is the objective function c okay and that is to be minimized 
Okay, in part E for four marks, it says determine the number of each type of boat Harry should buy. You must make your method clear and state the minimum cost. So four marks on this. Now, when we're minimising, it's going to generally, just speaking generally here, it's going to be the first vertex we meet as we move in to the feasible region. If we're maximising one, it's the last vertex that we uh, go to on as we, we're leaving the feasible region. This is minimising. So what we're going to be doing is looking at certain uh, values around these two. We don't want to take it out there as we're trying to minimise the cost. We want it on one of these. Now, there are a few different approaches, well, two main different approaches. One, you can do vertex testing and then consider, if necessary, integer solutions. Or you can use now the objective line. So what we could do is write an objective line. I'm going to do it with an objective line. So this is what we've got. Now, if I think of just setting this equal to a constant, if I said now that 100, let's have 100x, and we can choose anything here, you decide, uh, plus 300y was equal to 3,000. Let's take that as a constant. Now, what I'd have here, x would be 30 and y would be equal to 100. So if I drew this line on here, let's go ahead and do that. What we can say, and I'll put it on here, so we'd have now, uh, on this we would have, let's just check that, sorry, that would be 10, my apologies, that would be 10 and 30, let's, there we go, that's my objective line, let's just change the, uh, we'll change the colour of that um, and switch it over, so we'll just make that red, okay, so this is an objective line, so what I can say now is the cost, which is to be minimised, I'm writing it just here, C is equal to uh, 100x, plus uh, 30, uh, 300y. So all I've done is set it to a constant. So if x was 0, uh, y would be 10. If uh, y was 0, x would be 30. And all I'm going to do is just now feed this through. And I'd have to show this on here, so let's just put this here. Now you can do this with a ruler and a, a set square, and you just move it in. And it is the first vertex now we get to, which is going to be just here. So that's the first vertex. And that's the one we're interested in. So what I'm going to do is just now consider, let's just put two of these on. This now is the, um, the line, the objective line. And this is the first vertex it meets. If we were doing a problem here when we we're trying to maximise, um, so we're minimising, it would be the last vertex. So if this region was closed off here, it would be, for example, this one. So what we're interested in now is the following. So what we've got is this point right here. And I'm going to state that this is going to be V1. Okay? So this is V1. And we're going to look now at V1. So if we go ahead and do V1, V1 is the point of intersection of X plus Y is equal to 90, which is just here. So just write it in here. V1. So X plus Y is equal to 90. And 2X is equal to 3Y. Okay, so what I'm doing now, and I'm going to put objective line, so ob line test, objective line test, I'm going to solve these simultaneous equations. So that's one, and that's two, and I'm going to find a value, and hopefully it'll come up to be an integer value, and then we can just go from there. So what we know then is the following, 2x is equal to 3y. So what I'm going to do is just rewrite equation one, and I'm going to say that uh, on here that y is equal to 90 uh, minus x, I can do that, or entirely up to you on how you want to solve these, so 90 minus x, so equation 2 becomes 2x is equal to 3, and then we can have 90 minus x, uh, so if I solve this, we're going to have 5x is equal to 270 minus 3x, add into both sides, and then from here we can see that x is going to be equal to 54. So that's nice, that gives me an integer value, x is going to be equal to 54. So this is one way of doing it, as stated, a few different ways. Uh, x is equal to 54. So if x is equal to 54, I'm going to sub that back into now equation 1. So we've got 54 plus y is equal to 90. And we can see from there that y will be equal to 36. So at this stage, now I can say number, so number of two seaters, so number of two seaters will be equal to 54. Uh, number of four seaters is going to be equal now to 36. 
So all we're going to do now is minimize the cost and we've got now all these are now just plugging in. So let's now look at the cost. The cost will be equal to 100 times by 54 plus and then it was 300 for the larger ones, 300 and then we got 36. So just putting this to a calculator, you can probably do it um, in your head. So what we're going to have, uh, that's going to be 5,400 plus now uh, 300 uh, times by 36, and that gives me 16,200. So minimum cost 16,200. So all I've done is use now the objective line method. I've found now some constant, again, you could probably find a slicker one than this, and just considered the first vertex that we meet when we go into the feasible region. The alternative is, is to do vertex testing. So you would solve a simultaneous equation of that one, you'd solve a simultaneous equation of that one, and if there were more, you would do them, and then consider which is going to give you the cheaper. So you'll still get your marks that way, but do make sure you're answering the question. And it tells us to state the minimum cost. The minimum cost is going to be 16,200. I've shown clearly, I've used now the objective line test, I've found this point to be V1, which is going to give me the minimum. You could go ahead and find that one and solve it, um, but it's going to give you a higher value. So there we go. Lots of different ways to answer, especially on part B for the two marks. If you're unsure, come back to it uh, here. If we think about now that line, here's this line. Let's look at this point here. Let's, let's just go back to this. If you're unsure, let's pick this point here. So we know that we have to be this side of the line. This is not allowed. So what I've got here now is 30. This is 32 seaters. Um, so two seat. And we got 20. Um, we got 20 uh, four seaters. If we look at this point right here, we've got uh, 40, 60. Uh, so we've got now on here, let's write this on. We've got, uh, let's just, uh, so we've got 60, 40. So we've got 60, 40. We can see at most there can be one and a half times the number of two seaters than four seaters. And often the way you look at this is, you know, it's fairly, fairly straightforward. You might even want to see it as a fraction. Um, and you could say now three, let's think about this, three fifths of the boat at most can be uh, the, uh, the, the uh, X's for two seaters. So look at different ways. I think that one will hold. Um, but it's fairly straightforward if you need to come back to it to, to find that. So there we go, total of 12 marks on question six. And as you can see, we've gone 17 minutes in the exam. It's not going to take you that long, but hopefully there's been some additional learning points for you in the video.